there's blood everywhere. Oh my god, he's just like in there. Oh that's how angry he was. That is your last line and your last broken promise to me. You're there when he was killed. I didn't want to kill him. I didn't want to kill him. Oh my god! My husband's son is dead! Oh my god! Okay, calm down. He's on the floor! There's blood everywhere! I didn't see one, see? Uh, the girl, she touched his neck. That was all she did. Nothing was moved. They say that uh, the deceased guy named Brad McGarry. The victim was face down with what appeared to be a gunshot wound to the head. Of course, there was a quite amount of blood on the floor. We didn't figure that it had been over five or six hours since he had been shot. There was no signs of any struggle of any sort. Looking for answers, investigators turned to the people who discovered Brad dead. The people outside are David Kinney and his wife, Sherry, the woman who called 911. I just talked to him. They had a wedding last night. My niece said, you guys come out whenever. I called him. He didn't answer, and I told him well, we come to the basement door and knock, because my daughter knocks on the front door. I told her, I said, sis, go knock on the back door. And we went in, and I yelled for him. And, I, and then that's what he said, you two stay here. He went down the basement, and, he, and then he yelled, call 911. David Kenny showed a great deal of emotion. He expressed disbelief that his friend was gone. How long have you guys been left? Eight, nine years. Oh, yeah. My kids call him up. Yeah, he's one of my best friends. But I, I don't see a, a gun. But they flipped him over, they didn't see a gun. And if that's the case, it wasn't no suicide. You're dealing with homicide. The hunt for who killed Brad McGarry was on. Back outside Brad's house, Chief Kovalik looks for answers by continuing to press Sherry and David Kinney. Did he ever say that he was he, The last relationship he was in, they, it was pulled off and he hasn't been with anybody ever since. It was the well, girl? No, it was, it it was, was the guy. guy. Um, he, oh, he uh, was in with the guy? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, who was the guy? He, uh, uh Scott something. Brad Bricker and an Orgy. Yeah. Brad was a gay man. And as he was leaving, David Kenny you know, put out his hand and grabbed my hand and he, he squeezed it very tight and he, he looked at me right in the eye and said, Brad was the best friend I had in the whole world and I loved him. Please find out who did this to my friend. The next day, the results of the autopsy come in. Brad was killed by two gunshots from a 22 caliber handgun to the back of the head. He really ransacked. Uh, it's three drawers open. The crime scene itself presents a mystery. And the thing that surprises me here is it's not gone through enough. It's just kind of rifled a little bit. It was a rush job, it was sloppy, and it definitely started to feel like a staged crime scene. It was made to look like something that it wasn't. Days into the investigation, and detectives are no closer to catching Brad McGarry's killer. Question another one of Brad's close friends. Officer Martin tells me Mike he has some knowledge about the. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've known Brad for <clears throat> going on 12, 13 years. I know quite a bit of information as far as the type of relationship they had, the problems that him and DJ were having. Okay. This person told us that when Brad had a relationship with a man known as DJ. So he was like, you know, you know what they would call a closet case or someone who was still in the closet. Uh, DJ was, you know, married. We learned that DJ was married and his wife did not know that he was in a relationship with Brad and that this was a, a secret that had been being kept for years. And then he tells investigators DJ's real name. It's a name they've heard before. And when together. we say DJ, we're talking about David, David Kinney. Kinney, because that's all I knew of DJ. David Kinney, Brad McGarry's best friend, and the man who found Brad dead in his basement. Yeah, he's one of my best friends. 
kind of popped out of nowhere. This DJ that he had been in this relationship with was David Kenny. Up until a couple hours ago, our whole idea of the relationship of David Kenny and Brad Gary is that they were very, very close friends. Now, we learned that David Kenny and Brad McGarry were involved in a sexual relationship. It was time to have a different conversation with David Kenny. How close were you and Brad? Very close. Did you say you were his best friend? Yes, sir. You okay. And you see the suspect start to respond emotionally. <laughs> That's an indicator that you're close to them reaching some sort of moment where they're going to give you something. We're just friends, we're just friends, we're just friends. I'm looking through his phone and seeing we're lovers, we're lovers, we're lovers. We were able to see uh, text, deleted photos. And now, investigators suspect he was having an affair with Brad an affair Kinney's wife knew nothing about. Detective Cruz also recovers deleted voice messages from Brad McCary, left just days before he was killed. You know, you not only broke a promise, you lied, and then he had the to tell me. That is your last lie, and your last and broke a promise to me. You're a But it's his analysis of the phone's GPS locator that's the most revealing. The most important thing is, is, is putting him at the crime scene at the time of the murder. David, there's some, there's some stuff on your phone that's a little, a little questionable. Uh, yes, sir. What, uh, how close were you and Brad? Very close. How close were you guys? Very, very close. Come on, great. Best friend. Did you guys have sex together? There was a few times in the past where, you know, he's attempted a lot. We've kind of grown a little bit in the past. It's okay. Hey, look. Uh, I'm being old. What year is it? Well, this is 2017. This is between us, okay? Yes, sir. I tried to put him at ease about it. I told him, I said, you know, what year is it? No one cares. Maybe your wife's probably gonna care, but as far as society, no one's gonna care. You like dudes or chicks, I mean, no one cares. This is my wife. Is this something that she cares? Not right now. Where's your phone putting you at Brad's house the time you got killed? It's past three. We're oh, there. God. We know exactly when he was killed. David was about to share with me what happened. You were there when he was killed. No, sir, I was not at his house when that man was murdered, That's sir. It. David, oh. look at me. You still have starting to look. Yes, yeah, sir, I know, but it's starting to look know. pretty messed up. I want to deal later. David and Brad were involved in this sexual relationship, and David didn't want more, but Brad did. Brad wanted a lot more than David was willing to give. Four hours into the interview, David Kinney starts to break down. I knew you had something to do with Brad's death. It's just hard, you know? I know it's hard. It's the hardest thing you've ever done. Just say it. Brad didn't want me to leave my wife for a while. Well, quite a while. Yeah. It's just hard, you know, with this, like, our situation. At one point, David told him, hey, we we can't do this anymore. And Brad was th threatening to tell David's wife about the affair. I told him, I said, you know, things are gonna have to start to stop. Can't take at all. What happened? She hit me, smacked me around a couple times. She got real loud with me. You know, kind of like up in my face. David said that Brad grabbed a 22 pistol that he had laying around the basement. He had it in his hand, just kind of like waving it at me, you know what I mean? Telling me, you know, you're up, I'm tired of you, I can't be my emotions this long, you just call it quits. So I show up. Kenny insists he was afraid Brad was going to shoot him, so he snatched the gun away. But Chief Aller doesn't buy it. I believe David Kenny 
with prior calculation and design, shot Rab McGarry twice in the back of the head. Then he staged a crime scene. Chief Aller takes David's written statement and then allows him to speak with his wife, Sherry. idea that that a father can you know shoot a man to death that he claimed to love then bring his own child to help him find this man that the child called uncle who would do something like that <laughs> I don't care if you got 20 years on the force or 20 days, you're going to continue to see things that surprise you and, and shock you, even if you think you've seen it all. And this was, this was one of those things. The ironic thing is, David killed somebody that loved him because he was just so afraid of this secret about his alter personality, his alter life, if you will, being revealed, that he was willing to murder somebody that loved him over it. And what's sad is now everybody knows anyway, and Brad's dead. 우주에서 가장 재미있는 채널, Discovery.